Welcome to part three of Intro to Style Guide Driven Development. In this lesson, I'll answer the question, why use style guide driven development? We previously talked about what is style guide driven development and how it incorporates design as part of the process via living style guides. Now let's dive into the reasons why you should be using it. Reason one, because it provides both a framework and a playground for development. It provides a framework as the living style guide contains definitions of UI elements, Think of colors, typography, as well as headers, input control and buttons, as well as a library of components. Think of navigation systems, toolbars, search bars, and the like. So when you start coding, you're not starting from scratch. Instead, you can build upon existing definitions and continue contributing to it. It also provides a playground because you can use the Living Style Guide as a place for building, testing, and ultimately demonstrating the application. See, because the Living Style Guide is installed as part of your application, you can build new pieces of your application and see how they work in isolation via the Living Style Guide, which becomes the place where the development takes place, even before it's integrated in the application. Neat, right? Reason 2, because it encourages creating reusable components. Something interesting about laying out in front of you the multiple items that you want to organize is that you immediately start finding similarities and differences among them. Based on this, you're likely to create groups. Think of the inside of a kitchen cabinet. Glasses go together, cups go together, plates go together, and so on. And among the plates, you can probably group together the small and large ones. In the same way, when you start storing in your living style guide the different UI elements that you create, you get to see their differences and similarities. This quickly puts you in the mindset of reusability, as there's no point in creating a new UI element if one like it already exists. Additionally, because new UI elements are added to the Living Style Guide, making this element play well with the rest becomes paramount. It's no longer about making this new button or side nav for a specific page of your app. Instead, it's about making this element that fits the styles and patterns established in the Living Style Guide. This is where components come into place as they are reusable parts of the whole versus elements created for a one-time use. Reason 3, because it facilitates communication among teams. As part of building a living style guide, a UI language will be developed as well. In a way, when new documentation is added, there's an implicit agreement that this new widget has a certain name, or that a popover is a drop-down module that behaves like this. Naming UI elements is something that will happen regardless of using a living style guide. However, when these decisions are recorded in a place the team has agreed to use as a style guide, they become common language and make communications with the client and the team much easier. Also, the fact that you can share a link to specific places in the Living Style Guide can save a lot of time in explaining something that can be looked at, and many times interacted with, putting everybody literally on the same page. Now that you know why you should be using Style Guide Driven Development, you can continue on to the next lesson and learn what is the actual process and how you can use it in your own development workflow.